We're back for a lecture on modal tunes, part of the post-bop period. Post-bop period is a little tricky. It's vital. We, we know that. It's an amazingly important time. It gives jazz it's a, a whole bunch of new material to work with. It's really been quite a while since that's happened, you know, since the beginning of the bebop period. And it's you know, we can now date music that we hear. We know that if we hear a modal tune or chordal harmony, it's it's 1959 or beyond. We we know that. We can tell that. And the musicians fell in love with these innovations. The problem is this. As important as those innovations are, not everybody hears them very well. They are very tricky, especially for non-musicians to perceive that. You know, do you really hear the difference between tertian harmony and chordal harmony. It's hard. I don't want you to be overly worried about that. I do want you to know the definition. I do want you to know what modal tunes are and who played them, what, what they're supposed to sound like. But I also understand that it may be a bit tricky to actually perceive these. Uh, for me, I would relate it to uh, art. I love art. I love going to uh, art galleries. I love going anywhere that there's art. But in fact, I don't, uh, I don't perceive it that well all the time. You know? uh, the difference between Monet and Manet, hmm, maybe not. You know, I can tell the difference between Rembrandt and Monet. I still love them all. I love looking at them. But you know, when you get to some of the subtle differences, it takes, a, it takes some real study. And this is just a beginning of class. But with that said, I do want you to get the chance to hear some of these things. Uh, in isolation, so perhaps it'll help you perceive them a little bit better. And we're going to talk about modal tunes. Modal tunes, based on the word mode, means a scale. And we're going to use a very specific scale. You go to the keyboard and play D to D, just on the white notes. We call that the Dorian mode. Dorian is a Greek term. They actually named this over a couple thousand years ago. Greeks were way ahead of the music theory area. I think it has a minor sound to it. We love this minor sound, a little bit darker, a little bit more personality. If I take every other note of that scale, I have what's called a D minor seventh chord. Now we have a chord and we have a scale. And so in jazz terms, D minor seventh, and we usually play the D Dorian mode. Sounds great. Also, all the notes of that scale sound great with the chord. I can build it up from the bottom. Just white notes. Wow, what a nice chord. Very jazzy sounding. So when Miles chose to do modal tunes, I don't think it was an accident or just kind of, well, let's try this out. I think he worked pretty hard on which mode he wanted to use. Very flexible. Very easy to play on one level, but it gives you some chance to dig into it. What's also interesting is because he just had two chords to work with and what's going to be the second chord. He could have picked something almost the same, but that wouldn't have given us very much differentiation between the first and the second chord. And what he chose to do in musical terms was he just moved everything up a half a step. And now where there were no black notes before, now there's a lot of black notes. And this gives us the biggest difference in sound between the two chords. D minor, E flat minor. So when you're hearing this, and I ask you to listen for this on the tune, so what? You know, this is, this is a big change there, at least for musicians. They hear this and they know where they're at and everything. I'm gonna play through this. I'm gonna use a walking bass line. Rather than play the whole 32 bar form, I'm just gonna play 24 bars. I'm gonna do eight bars of D minor, eight bars of E flat minor, eight bars of D minor again kind of an A, B, A form. See if you can hear the chords change. <clears throat> Here we go. A one, two, three.
minor to E flat minor to D minor. Now, you have this video. You can play this back as many times as you want to. And I urge you to do that. And some of you are going to probably do what I did when I first started hearing modal tunes. And people were pointing them out to me. And I was listening to them on records. And I didn't have a clue what was going on. Not a clue. I was saying, well, there's a lot of chords going on there. I'm hearing a lot of chords. You, you may have heard more than just two. But you also know the answer to that if you think carefully. Because what the piano player is doing, in this case me, is I'm not playing a lot of different chords, but I am playing a lot of different voices. Those are the, which notes of those chords am I going to play and where? This is all D minor. sounds there but it turns out it's all D minor this is one of the ways that keeps modal tunes interesting is that the keyboard player can get in there and come up with all different voices different sounds different textures that people can work off of it's a little bit more difficult I think for the soloists they, they got to stick to those melodic notes they'll stick in a few harmonic sounds every or uh, non-harmonic sounds every now and then you know, in this case, B, it would be a black note every now and then, but they've got to come up with melodies with not too many notes at all. That's a, that's a tricky thing to do. It's one reason why the really great modal players, I think, are relatively rare. Because, wow, coming up with a good melody, being so restricted with the materials, it's very difficult to do. In fact, coming up with a good melody is one of the two things about modal tunes that make it very difficult. You may think, well, it's just one chord or two chords. That's probably the easiest thing to do. And on one level, it is. If you start a beginning improv class, uh, you know, before you learn three chords, you got to learn two. Before you learn two, you got to learn one. Sometimes we start with a blues chord, blues scale. Some of you may use like a mixolydian scale and rock and roll. You know, those work well too. Uh, but in this case, Jazz musicians tend to start with the Dorian mode. Those of you that are getting into improvisation in whatever genre you're in, you should consider this. D to D, just to begin with. Play on those particular notes and see what happens. You know, it's because they all sound pretty darn good, whether it's a guitar player or other keyboard players. You know, you should consider that. I uh, just am killing a mosquito here, by the way. I hate to look distracting on this, but uh, a mosquito is on our film crew now and I'm not paying them. So, you know, that's that's something you should think about doing there is, is improvising just yourself. Those of you that play even just a little piano, go in, play D, F, A, C, and just play white notes on top of it. It's pretty cool. I said that playing melodies is one of the more difficult things. I'll come back to that in a second. The other thing that makes modal tunes difficult is that there's only two chords. Makes it easy. But it makes it hard because it's so easy to get lost. And beginning players and medium level players, in fact, until you're an advanced player, it is so easy to get lost on a modal tune. You hear a chord, you kind of, you kind of know where you're at. Then you hear a change of chord, you go, okay, now I know I'm there, but that lasts for a long time. Then you go back, oh, I hear that. And you kind of don't know where you're at sometimes. Beginning players get lost almost every time. Almost every time. That's just the nature of it. All right. Uh, think of it like this. You're on a street, you're going down the street, and there's roads every block, right? You've got a lot of blocks, and on these blocks you have street signs. They tell you where you're at. So you may be on Road X, and you know right where you're at because you're going by this road, by this road. You know, those are like a lot of chords, and that's, that's really good. It helps you. But what if you're on the same road and all of a sudden there's no cross streets? How do you, you know you're on that road, but where are you supposed to be at. You know, it's like, well, what mile marker am I at? It's very easy to know while well, I'm kind of here, but you don't know specifically. I hate it when people give me directions and they go, well, turn left on Smith Street and then turn right on Jones. And, well, how far down is Jones? Is it two blocks? Is it a mile and a half? Do I have to enter Canada? You know, I mean, where's Jones? You know, let's be specific here. Turn left on Jones, go three blocks, and then turn right. 
Okay, that's a little bit easier to work with. We can understand that. So that's the big issue, getting lost. I have to tell you, when I first started playing jazz, I loved modal tunes because I kind of knew what I was doing. But once I started to realize how often I was getting lost, I literally stopped playing them until I became a much more experienced player. And uh, it, because I just hated getting lost on it. And uh, so that's one of the big things, getting lost. Next thing, coming up with a melody. Think about this, you only have, have a few notes. It's a whole lot easier, as a matter of fact, when you start to learn chords to play tunes with a lot of chords. You gotta learn to play over them, but they come by and they help you. They know where you're at, and they even give you notes to play. Let's take the very famous tune we talked about, the George Gershwin tune, I've Got Rhythm. Thousands of tunes written on this chord progression. I'm gonna play through the A section, and I'm just gonna play chord tones, just the basic tunes of each, tones on each chord. It's gonna sound pretty good. It's gonna sound fairly melodic, all right? But the chords go by every two beats, so they're changing. They've got a lot of material to work with. Here's what I've Got Rhythm sounds like. Into the key. A one, two, three, four. to play once you get used to the chords. You know, it takes time to learn how to play all those chords, but not too bad once you get it. But a modal tune, if I was to do the same thing on a modal tune, it's tricky. It's tricky. There's not much to work with. Here's a modal tune, just a little bit, but with a little bit more hip melody. All white notes. I think I snuck in one black note. But that's a, that's a lot of experience coming up with that. Do we have a corollary of this in some other field? Well, as a matter of fact, we do. In literature. And in fact, the most amazing of all literature areas, I guess literature is the wrong word, writing, composing, that's poetry. What if I said to you, I want you to come up with a really good piece of art, a great poem, it has to rhyme. We're gonna make it even tougher. It has to rhyme, but you can only use a few words. And when it gets done, it's gotta move us. It's gotta make us laugh and think. Well, it turns out, you know, that's very hard to do. Try that. Go home and say, I'm gonna pick a limited number of words. How many words do we need? 100, 200? See what you come up with. Who was so successful at this? Well, the gentleman that's been the most successful has to be Ted Geisel. That may be Ted Geisel, and I apologize for mispronouncing his word, his name. How many of you know who Ted Geisel is? Raise your hands. All right. You don't know who Ted Geisel is? Well, Ted Geisel, wow, almost uh, 65 years ago, 60-some years ago, was given an assignment. He had a friend, and this friend was in a publishing company, and he said, I hate children's literature. It's terrible. It's boring. He said, help us out here. He said, I'm going to give you a few words. And the amount of words were like 250, which is not a lot of words. Think about that. He said, here's 250 words that I know seven-year-olds understand. Write me an interesting book based on just these words. And Ted Geisel went home and he came up with an amazing book. What was that book? Of course, it was The Cat in the Hat. Ted Geisel, of course, is Dr. Seuss. He cheated. He came up with like 16 additional words, the funniest words in the book but such a limited way of doing it. It was a modal approach in its own way to writing literature. And in my mind, the solos, Miles' amazing solo on So What? And the Cat in the Hat, it's about as good as it gets. <laughs>